everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I record audio for my wildlife videos. Uh, I'm just going to show you two different options uh, that I use that I would consider that are more budget friendly options. The first one that we have here that I've used for, for many years and different versions of this is the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is probably the easiest uh, external mic to use, in my opinion. What I like about it, it has a rechargeable battery that clips it in the front and it has different customizable settings on the back. You can set your filters, uh, your record level, your gain level, uh, which makes it definitely easier to use. Um, when I'm using this, when I'm out in the field, I tend to wear earbuds a lot so that I can monitor the audio. And if you've been following me for a while, or even if not, if you check out any of my Loon videos on my channel or on any of my social media pages, uh, this is what I've used for almost every single one of my Loon videos. The audio is, is very good, no complaints about it. It's also directional, which helps. It tends to pick up everything in front of the microphone rather than when you're holding this on, you know, up to your face. If you're using the mic camera and you're breathing heavily, like for me, I tend to hold my breath while I'm filming a lot just to stay more stable. And I noticed the on-camera mic was picking up my breath, me taking a deep breath or letting it out a lot because the mics on the camera are sensitive and they're near your face and they're kind of just picking up ambient sound around you where this is more directional, it's pointing out in front of you. So this is definitely, in my opinion, the cheapest way that I would go. They do make shotgun mics that mount onto the cameras that are cheaper than this. But um, in my opinion, this has been the best one so far. And you do want the wind cover. Uh, they're also sometimes called dead cats. Uh, this definitely keeps the wind noise down. Very helpful, um, in my opinion. Again, definitely need to have that. Uh, as far as mounting, it just screws on into one of your shoe mounts. Pretty simple. Uh, I use a cage on my camera and I just mount it off to the side or sometimes on the top handle. So again, this is option one. This is the cheapest route that I would go personally. I wouldn't go any cheaper than this one. I will link this down in the description below. And let's move on to option two. Okay, next up we have option two. Uh, this route is a little bit more advanced, but in, again, in my opinion, I think this is more of a higher quality, more professional setup. Uh, first off, the mic we have is a Sennheiser MKE 600. These things are built like a tank. Absolutely the best mic company on the market, in my opinion. Uh, there are much more expensive versions than this one, but I found that this is a good middle ground as far as price goes and quality. Again, you want the wind cover. Kind of slides on there. Uh, this is also mountable to camera shoe, uh, or you can put it on a sound pole if you're doing more of an external setup. And what this records to, this one, I don't go straight to camera. Uh, I go right to, uh, this is the Zoom F3 multi-track recorder. Uh, this is a newer product, but what's great about this is it has 32-bit float audio, which if you're not familiar with that, basically the equivalent of raw audio, basically raw photos versus JPEG. You have just the amount of flexibility that you have with editing 32-bit float is incredible. It doesn't peak. It's never too quiet, really. Uh, you can edit it extremely hard and it'll hold up. So a lot of times what I do with this is this is a secondary setup. I'll, I'll, and I should mention it attaches with a XLR cable from both ends. I just don't have that on. Uh, the reason I don't have that on is actually an elk found my setup in Canada and chewed my cable, and I haven't actually replaced it yet because I haven't been using this for the last couple of months, um, but that I do need to do. So 
again, just uh, be cautious of that. Some animals do tend to like these things when they find them. Um, but yeah, I'll set this up sometimes out way away from people. Uh, if I'm filming in an area that's kind of populated with a lot of people or traffic noise or anything like that, you could set this one out in the field, let it run. It returns to, uh, I'm sorry, it records to internal cards. So, you know, I can let this run for a couple hours and then come back and pick out the sounds that I need and match it up with my video. Again, as I mentioned, you can also put it on a sound pole if you're doing dedicated audio. A lot of times when I'm filming elk, for example, uh, because of ambient noise around, whether it's traffic or people, uh, I will go back out at night and record just the sounds and then try to match it up with some video later. That's another option. So um, I do like this as well. I think this is a better setup than recording internally in camera. Uh, but again, it's more work. It's more things to carry. So uh, quick video. Those are my two options. Again, I'm, I'm not really going to get into how to use all these. I just wanted to answer the question of how I personally record audio. And if you're interested in any of these products, I will link all of them in the description below. And thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.